Okay, so I want to talk about a few things that have happened in the last few days. Uh, first thing is that, number one, I've printed off this little uh, uh, stand here for my phone, the Note 4, so that I don't have to keep holding it uh, while I film and try to talk and all that. Um, so, a uh, last week I printed uh, this thing right here, which is a bust of the Predator. And I really wanted a big one. So... Uh, I went on and printed a big one. This is it here. Uh, this took 48 hours to print. Two full days of printing. Uh, this is printed on the high setting with uh, hollow thick walls, which is what I've been doing a lot on this stuff because it really saves a lot of time, but it's still um, pretty uh, sturdy. I'm going to try to get this close and see if it'll uh, maybe zoom in, or not zoom in, but focus in on uh, the detail. Eh, it's sort of getting there. Uh, you can see that there's there's a lot of lines there. I mean, frankly, I was I was kind of surprised. This is the highest quality setting, and it's you know it could be a lot better. It really could be a lot better. Um, there we go. Now it's kind of focusing. Now, there are some things you can do uh, to get rid of that, and that's what I'm experimenting with next. Um, basically, from what I understand is the acetone uh, won't work on PLA, which is what I work with. Uh, acetone uh, baths and uh, vapor baths only work with PLA, and the problem is... I've tried printing on this thing with PLA one, uh, a couple of times, and it just never worked right. So that's why I've been sticking with uh, uh, PLA instead of ABS. I don't remember if I said ABS a second ago. But you know, ABS is what you need to print in to get uh, the baths to work. So I've been looking around, and there's several different options. Most of them seem to be pretty toxic. Uh, but what I did find was there's a, an epoxy that I found on Amazon uh, that I'm going to order here maybe in a week or two. I'm kind of broke right now. I've pretty much blown the bank on uh, all the stuff that I bought so far. But uh, I might give that a try. It, uh, it, would, uh, it seems like it would work. It covers everything in an epoxy. Uh, a, a few layers of that seem to uh, give you the kind of results you're looking for. Uh, another update, I spent all day yesterday, literally all day uh, yesterday, uh, doing some work on this printer. Um, I finally managed to get into the uh, uh, M3D forums, and how I managed it was I did a Google search for the forums, and then rather than clicking the link to go right to the forums, I clicked the little uh, down arrow at the end of the link and chose the uh, cached version of the website. So when I went in there, it showed me what was in there and I also saw a button where I could register for the forms. So I did that and that allowed me to uh, get into the forms. And once I was in there, I spent several hours uh, looking through the forms at some of the issues that I've been having that I know that other people have ha been having. Uh, the most pressing issue for me was uh, this stuff right here, where the object is shifting over in one direction. I, I've been having this pretty consistently, this happen. Uh, to some, some things it, it does it, some things it doesn't. It did not do it on this one. I, I had some kind of rough layers in here, but it didn't shift over like this, so I thought this was just a, uh, a problem with the 3D file. But, so yeah, I printed it here, then I printed it again, I think a, a few days later, later. So I got onto the forums and did some things that they talked about, and here is the Iron Man print. It printed perfectly, or pretty perfectly. There's, you know, some things, some problems. I'm having problems with it sticking to the raft, and I can't get it off the raft. And then this part right here, I think the model was just incomplete. But, um... How I did this 
there were two settings that you have to adjust. And this was not mentioned at all in any of the manuals or anything. Uh, so this I just found out by going to the forums. Uh, the first thing that you need to do, and I'm going to kind of move you over here. And we're going to look up here at my uh, computer screen. There we go. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. Not too much. All right, the setting that you have to do is, and I'll put a, uh, well actually there really isn't even uh, much on the forums about it. Uh, you're going to click on this little gear here in the top right hand corner. And you're going to go to calibration and over here advanced calibration. And number one, you want to click this top one, Recalibrate Bed Location. Once you do that, it'll take it a few minutes, you're going to do the uh, option right below it. It says Print Test Border. And what it's going to do is it's going to print uh, one of these, like this. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to measure how high each of the uh, rows are. Now, it's you can only adjust it. Let me go over here. It's for a, the, the print test borders for adjusting this stuff here. The problem is is that it's you can only adjust in the corners. Well, on this little print, the problem is that the corners are actually globs. If I turn it sideways, you can kind of see the glob. So really, that doesn't work. You can't really measure it right on the corner. And then the problem that I was having is that if I move to the right of the corner I get one size and the left of the corner I get a different size so I was never really sure which size I was supposed to use so I guesstimated and played around with it and this is about as best I can do the problem is is that I keep adjusting these numbers but the dimensions are staying the same on the test border and I don't know why that is so I'm probably going to keep doing some more searching on the forums or possibly uh, start a thread and ask some people on there. So that's, believe it or not, is the easy one to do. That's the easy one. Uh, you just, uh, if it's uh, the, when you measure the rows, each row should be uh, 0.4 millimeters high. If it's two low you hit the plus sign to bring it up some make it taller if it's too uh, too tall then you want to uh, hit the minus sign to bring that corner down hit apply print another one I ended up printing probably about 20 or 25 of those test borders trying to get it to work so the next thing that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna come down here to advanced and we're gonna switch to expert mode All right, this is going to bring up this thing, and I've got a PDF for the with these instructions in it, so I'll post that in the uh, in the description. You're going to type the word backlash, not backslash, backlash, B A C K L A S H, up here where it says manual insert G code. When you have that typed in, you're going to hit send. And you're going to select the type of filament. I'm using PLA and hit OK. Now what it's going to do is it's going to print a cylindrical object. And it prints pretty quickly. Um, and what we're going to do here in a second when this gets done printing is we're going uh, to have to measure it and then put the uh, numbers we come up with right here where it says pre-processor settings. We have to go in there and adjust those numbers. And yes, that seems like very technical and a giant pain, which I was not expecting to have to deal with this kind of thing. I mean, with the bed leveling, it should be easy to have the printhead go to each corner, go down till it touches the bed, and register that height. 
I mean, I shouldn't have to be going in and doing the print test border and, and messing with all that, especially when the micro is supposed to be a easy to use plug and play consumer thing, let alone this thing here. Cause you, I mean, I haven't even talked about the formulas you have to use to ca calculate these numbers. And of course I forgot to hit okay. So I'm going to adjust this back down. So here we go. It's going to print. Uh, I think I'm going to pause the video while it prints. Um, the instructions will be in the uh, description. Um, let me see if I've still got one somewhere around here. So, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to print a cylinder. And you know what? This is not what it looks like, but I'm just going to use this as an example. Uh, what you have to do is it's going to print a cylinder. And this cylinder is not going to be a perfect cylinder. In fact, it's going to be a little bit messed up. It's going to have these ridges on it. And what you have to do... is take your caliber calipers look at the cylinder and find the most circular area the, the area that's the most perfect circle and then you have to measure it going this way and measure it going this way and then they give you a very very complicated mathematical formula to uh fill in the numbers that you get, and then you put those in on those preprocessor settings and hit OK. And that, once I did that, that's what gave me this result. And since then, I've been having really, really good luck uh, with printing objects and things not messing up. So evidently, it, it worked. Um, I would hope they'd have a better solution than all that. But, uh, yeah. So if you've got any questions, you can leave me a comment. And like I said, if you're having a problem like I was having, uh, check the document that I, I'll put in the description that I'll walk you through these instructions uh, kind of step by step. See you next time.